Reach the Word Worldwide Network presents Point of Defense with apologist, theologian, and Bible teacher, Reverend John Crawford. Well, hello and welcome to Point of Defense. I'm Reverend John Crawford, your host. Welcome back on Preach the Word Worldwide Network TV. I'm glad to have you back here on today's program and have another very special guest, my new friend here that I just met, Dr. Fred Ray Librand, all the way from Texas, close to San Antonio, I believe he said. And uh, just a little bit of information about him. He studied English literature, communications, and fiction writing at the University of Alabama. He also taught speech communications at the University of Alabama as well. He has been a pastor for over 25 years in Texas, and he has a doctorate in applied theology uh, from Phoenix Seminary. He's also the co-founding director of the Free Grace Alliance, uh, along with Dr. Charlie Bing. We've had him on the show before as well. And he's also the author of eight books, one of which we're going to be talking about today. It's called Back to Faith and the Relationship Between Faith and Work. So, uh, Dr. Leibrand, welcome to Point of Defense today. Hey, John. It's great to be here. Yes, I was very excited uh, when you agreed to come on the show, and you're a friend of Dr. Charlie Bing's, and he certainly uh, gave me your contact information, and I thought, wow, it'd be great if he'd come on the show and uh, we could talk about your books and talk about, I think, uh, some very important topics relating to the issue of faith and that of works, because it has been very controversial throughout church history in the Catholic Church, and as well as several Protestant churches as well. Uh, and so a lot of people get that wrong when they talk about faith and works. Many teach faith plus works in order to have everlasting life and maintain everlasting life. While others say it's a faith that works. Uh, and so uh, we want to talk about that a little bit today and also in relation to uh, your book as well. So uh, let's begin here. Uh, let's just start off and talk about works. How would you define works? Uh, is that behavior? Could that be sin, uh, fruit, or ha or all those things? Or how would you define define well, work? It, at the high level, I guess the way I would define it is a little different, well, maybe, than, than the way the debate goes. So there's no topic probably more valuable to believers than what is this relationship if I trust in Christ and I'm a new creation, then what about this life I live? How does that gain work itself out? So at the high level, the way they define works would be, they actually mean change life. Okay. So it's kind of nebulous up there, but when we get down to it, it's kind of what you were saying. Uh, it's, it's merged with, with uh, fruit. They'll talk that way. Uh, they'll talk with uh, about deeds, actions, what you do, uh, behavior, anything that is out there that is something that you take action on that is connected to your faith. Uh, that's the way they think about this works game. Uh, th they think about that also without faith. So you can have dead works like Hebrews 6, 1 talks about uh, a, a game where you're doing good things to try to gain God's favor, where we would understand in our walk with God that we do good things because we have God's favor, you know? So it's a, it's a different <clears throat> orientation, but by looking at it, if you see someone, sharing their faith, for example, telling someone how to trust in Christ, you consider that a good work. Uh, the problem is they could have a bad gospel, not know the Lord themselves, but they're saying it, you know, they, they, they need some things cleaned up. So, uh, you know, that's the, it's, it's a more nebulous term, but it really is getting down to that behavior, change life, deeds you do, things you do connected to uh, your Christianity, your walk with God, your your faith in Christ. And there's much confusion because uh, if salvation is based, based on faith and works, if someone dies and they haven't done enough works to maintain their faith or to maintain their salvation, how can one really have any kind of assurance? Because someone may, Billy Graham may have more works than we would, for example, somebody you know, great and who's really famous like he was and reached a lot of people or even a missionary uh, around the world, Lottie Moon, somebody like that, for example, they would be seen as having a lot more works. But uh, at the same time, we have to look and ask, well, 
how many do we have to have? Did they have enough, too many or too much or too little? How much is required if, if, if we are to get into heaven? How many works? What scripture says we have to have a certain amount of works to be able to maintain or to be able to achieve uh, salvation? Yep. Come thou fount of every blessing. Remember that hymn, famous hymn? Right. Prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. He actually, that author never found his assurance because he was busy looking at what he did. And, and, and that's a challenge that we've got when we, when we get busy looking at what we do, well, how much assurance is there? Because I might quit tomorrow. I might do it imperfectly. Uh, I might do good things in this area and bad things in that. How much is enough? You, you know, pretty much were saying that it, it, for me, it comes down first to what you understand the gospel to be. And so it's either, you know, it's either a works, you got to uh, do good to get into heaven, or it's a faith plus works. That would be the Roman Catholic kind of understanding. They certainly think believing is important, but you add works to seal it, get there, avoid purgatory, something like that, and uh, or diminish it. Or it's faith alone, which has been, you know, the tradition uh, that we, I think, recovered from Paul. And there are others that held it. With the Reformation, you know, this sola fide, this faith alone thing came by where Luther in particular made that discovery that the works never took care of it. And then the scripture was opened up to him and he realized, Book of Galatians and elsewhere, that this faith in Christ, you know, is death, burial, resurrection. This faith would assure him because it was based on the sure promise of God. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. And so that moment of faith, we are assured because we're believing in an assuring gospel. We go on a little further, and instead of continuing to look at Christ, we start looking at us. You know, when you come to Christ, you don't want to look at you because all you got is a sick heart and a bunch of sin, you know? Right. So yeah. you, you give up on that. You trust in Christ alone. You're assured God does a transforming work inside out. And then I think the enemy of our soul gets us to muddle along a little bit. And we start looking at our works, trying to play the role of God, judging whether we are really in or out. And I'm just going to tell you, if you look at your works, uh, you're going to have doubts because it's a gospel of doubt. If you look at Christ, it's going to be pretty good. Yeah, because his work was perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, and his promise is perfect, too. Right, right. Yeah. So now, when we're, so works basically can be defined from what you said. They can be sin, they can be fruit, or just basically things we do that relate to sanctification, that relate to discipleship, perhaps, uh, how we live our lives, basically. Or even, let me just add, even um, things we don't do can be looked at it that way. So like James 2 will talk about, but you don't give them food. You don't give them clothes. So there's a lack of the possibility. I guess historically we've called it a sin of uh, omission. You know, right. all that fits in there, though the reformers in particular would like to make a distinction between sin and works, but they don't really, because when you get around to it, they're talking about the same thing. They're talking about a, a failure to see a changed life. And we have to be careful with that too, because who, you know, James two talks about, you know, faith without works is dead. Uh, you know, show me your faith by your works. And then the thing we have to ask is, well, who are we or anyone else to judge whether that person across the street or that person that sits next to you in the church pew has enough works. I mean, someone can fake it. Like you, you mentioned briefly there, someone can, you know, they can wear the three piece suit. They can tithe in church or give financial donations, whatever, or they can speak Christianese. They can read the Bible. They can pray. They can do all these things that look good, but deep inside not have a, an encounter with Jesus Christ and have received eternal life. So yeah, absolutely. So that can look Okay, that person looks like they're saved. Some people call it fruit inspectors. So I think we have to be careful to judge where someone else may be born again and have Christ and received him by faith, but yet you look at their life and you say, well, I don't know about that, man. This guy's said a cuss word. He 
lusted after a pretty girl. I saw it, you know, whatever it may be, uh, or he ate, you know, the whole buffet bar or whatever kind of sin. And we could look and say, oh, yeah, I don't know about that. But then again, it's not up to us to make that call. I think the scriptures are plain. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and eternal life can and will be saved. Genuinely. That's it. Uh, Work has nothing to do with it. Before right. you got those that front load the gospel, I'm sure you're familiar with that, like these lordship salvation proponents do. And then you have those that back load the gospel that say, well, you've got to maintain a certain amount of works to keep yourself saved. So, yeah, or, or they would say, prove that you're saved. That's another one. So, right. That right. If, if you don't have enough uh, fruit, then that's proof that, that you don't know Christ. There's and, no and of course, you know, part of the problem, I, I think what you bring up is great because we're not the judge. Even James by chapter five is inviting us not to be the judge. The judge is at the door. He's the one that's going to uh, figure it out. But what, what, what we tend to do is not recognize our inability as fallen creatures to really accurately see a person's whole life. We don't know where they started, how far back. We don't know right. what's going on. Uh, one of my favorite examples of this issue, the Last Supper. And so they're sitting around the Last Supper and Jesus says, one of you will betray me. And everyone says, Judas. No, they don't say Judas. They say, is it me? They all ask questions at me. So here they are. They've been together for three years and they can't tell that Judas, who's called a disciple, ain't really tracking with the program. You know, they just didn't have it at that time. So, so that's our problem. We as humans, we're not God, so we can't judge uh, the whole game. So we're already starting, you know, behind the eight ball if we're walking around staying in judgment of other people. And most of us don't like people to do it to us. You'd think that'd be a hint. Right. Yeah. And that's, a, that's an excellent point, Dr. Labrador. I never thought about that. There's Judas, but yet they're asking themselves, is it me? You know, did I do it? So it, it is a, uh, that's a very interesting uh, right. point. We there. can actually well. settle this. Do you have enough fruit to prove uh, that you're a believer? And I think if everybody would go, nope, well, then good. We're all done. So then it's not about fruit. It could be about your growth, your sanctification. You mentioned, right. you mentioned Lordship. So, so I wrote a, I wrote a book on this whole topic uh, back to faith, as you mentioned, and there's a whole chapter, uh, totally dedicated to uh, James chapter two uh, in there and walking through why James two is actually this faith without works is dead is about sanctification. It's about putting works with your faith as a matter of growing your faith. It's not about uh, getting in. It's right. related to your spiritual health. Well, part of what I point out in here is about Lordship. I'm not a fan of Lordship salvation, but I am a fan of lordship sanctification. So right. I do see Romans 12 for I urge you brethren, those who've already believed to offer your bodies, living sacrifice, etc. So I do see this place in a person's growth that they get to a place could be at the beginning, could be later, uh, sooner the better of abandoning your life to the Lord. You're utterly available to his will. You've, you've come to a place of saying, I'm going to submit my will to yours. Right. I want you to be Lord of my life. That's great in a walk, but it's not uh, what the gospel is. The gospel is faith alone in Christ alone. Which brings me to my next point. That we touched on it, but faith, or you, we could ask the question, how is saving faith defined? Now, a lot of people that are against, I guess, what we would believe is free grace people, as, as uh, people of the scriptures, uh, they say, well, you, that's just easy believism. And I like to ask, well, what do you want? Hard believism. And actually John MacArthur has written a book called hard to believe. I think it's what it's called. And that front, this Lordship salvation front loads the gospel into where you have to promise to commit, to obey, to follow. I'm like, wait, 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 wait a minute. You're asking an unregenerate lost sinner who knows nothing of Christ, nothing of the Holy spirit, nothing of the Bible church, anything to do something that's impossible because think about how hard it is for those of us that know Christ to do good works, much less someone who's not even saved. But when you're promising Christ, okay, I'm going to, I'll follow you. I'll commit to you. And a lot of preachers are guilty of giving 
I call them false invitations at church. Well, come follow Jesus. Well, and I'm thinking, how can you follow him until you come unto him first? You can't well, begin to follow him until you first, you have to have him to follow him and to say, to make all these promises, I'm going to do this and this and this. The problem with that, Dr. Lyburn, is what happens when I don't do those things I promised I would do to get saved? Does that mean I'm no longer saved? Yeah, or you do it imperfectly, you know? Yes. Sort it isn't good. Well, right. and that's the thing, you know, nothing in my hands I bring. Only to thy cross I cling. Mm -hmm. That's that is where the not easy part is. Um, it's actually incredibly challenging to totally give up that you can contribute in any way to your eternal destiny. That it's simply a matter of faith. And what we humans want to hold on to is I want to do something. So, like you said, preachers, I, you know, we we do this all the time. It, believe. Yes, but what do I do? You believe. Yes, but what do I do? Uh, how about pray this prayer? Okay. How about walk this aisle? Okay. <laughs> yeah. How about get baptized? Okay. A card. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's faith. It's right. it's actually uh, taking God at his word. You know, we have the question sitting here. How is faith defined? Well, I think the weird kind of emphasis I would stress is it's far less about faith than the object, you know? In other words, faith is, I don't know, faith. They have a word for it. Look it up in the dictionary. It's to believe. It has a knowing to it, but, but it's relative to the object of the faith. So if you believe in an assuring gospel, you can be assured. If you believe in a doubting gospel, you won't be assured. So, so it's not about the faith. It's actually the focus of the faith. That's where, you know, this whole game with the gospel and gospel clarity comes in. Like you said, well, I hear this all the time. Ask Jesus in your heart. Why do we want to be in there when it's dirty and filthy? You know, yeah. uh, well, give him your heart. Well, what does he want with your old black heart? Right. Well, uh, commit to him. Yeah. People do that. They commit to Muhammad and they commit to Buddha and they commit to trees, you know, whatever your religion is. And, yeah. uh, and and so as a result, that is not receiving. The reception is actually about faith, transformation of the heart and commitment, and all this stuff. These are uh, outward doing things that relate, as I said, to lordship sanctification. They have to do with your walk with God, uh, not with how you come into a relationship with the Lord, how you get adopted into the family of God. That is a faith alone in Christ alone proposition. Mm -hmm. Right. And this whole idea of this, this thinking, it, our stinking thinking, I guess you could call it, this, this whole mindset of make Jesus your Lord. We don't make him do anything. He's right. already Lord. And right. some of the Lordship proponents will say, well, he's Lord of all or not at all. They say it, real, it sounds real pious and that'll preach. But when you start applying that, he is Lord of all, sure. But when you apply that to saving faith, how can he be your Lord until you first, you got to receive him and he's already Lord of your salvation. Sure. We're not saying we don't believe he's not Lord. He's already Lord. And it, it does go together in a sense, but you don't begin to see the fruition of that until after a time of walking with him, as you mentioned. And I would yeah, agree with something, that. something God hits you with, but most of, I mean, he is Lord. It's done. Yeah. The question is, have you noticed? Are you still in guerrilla warfare? You don't recognize the government. You're hiding in the mountains and you're uh, causing havoc. I mean, that's a lot of what people do with their Christian life. They have not come to the place of recognizing, hey, he's in charge. Why don't you get in on it? You know, uh, right. bring your life to match his will. But that's for believers. You know, right. and there's yeah, he talks about, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, how can someone who's lost? They don't even know what the commandments are. <laughs> and right. even have a lot of people that have been saved, or at least claim to be saved, received eternal life. They don't even know what all the commandments are. I, I mean, what that. are the chances you could you could hold a gun to someone's head on their deathbed? They say, I know Christ, I'm saved, or received eternal life. Okay, name me all the commandments Christ ever commanded. I guess you're going to have to shoot me because I can't tell you all of them. Uh, much less do all of them. Nobody does. I mean, unless you're just sinlessly perfect. That's why Jesus came to fulfill the will of the Father. He yeah, fulfilled them all. He did all those good. 
Yeah. And you're right. This is where some of the rub is because a walk with Christ is, I would say technically stumbling in the right direction. So you've got this lifetime oh, yeah. <laughs> direction, but it's not going to always be uh, a smooth and saintly uh, existence. You know, uh, he is without sin, cast the first stone. This is part of the nature of the game. Well, if you don't get that about yourself, you're going to be pretty judgmental towards others, but it's a loop because if you're busy judging others, it's going to eventually come back on you. And a lot, a lot of times what people do is they try to justify themselves by seeing how many notches on their belt they can get by other people believing in this, I think misguided scripturally misguided notion of uh, my works really prove something about uh, my standing before God and, and your standing before God is settled judicially. It's declared by God mm -hmm. when you believe. Right. And then believe is what Jesus said. Now, of course we can get into a whole other topic. Uh, Dr. Bing and I discussed this on repentance. <laughs> uh, you know, some see repentance as it's separate from salvation. Others see it as a part of salvation as synonymous that would seem to make the most sense while others, the extreme grace view says you don't repent at all to get saved. You just believe, well, you know, and there's any number of views, but uh, where I am with it now, repentance seems to be synonymous with faith because you have passages that seem to indicate repentance is the same as believing, even though they're different words. And I know people could argue, like I said, any number of ways, but Jesus said to believe, if you read the gospel of John, he said to believe and uh, never mentioned the word repent. He just said, believe on him. Now, right. uh, simply believing in him is, you know, people say, well, it's more than just a mental ascent. Well, sure it is. When you believe you are, you yourself as a whole person are believing. It's not, you're not just believing with <laughs> part of your arm or your head or your face. Right. You're, you are believing with all of you. Well, and uh, I don't think part of it is what you're repenting from. So there are people that you're repenting from all sin, all known sin. I remember a preacher one time was giving an invitation and a guy walked down front. He, you know, it's an altar call uh, who wants to trust Christ. And the guy walks down and he says, what's that in your pocket? And he said, oh, that's cigarettes. Well, you can't come to Christ unless you commit to give those up. And he said, well, I don't know about cigarettes. I just want Christ. You know, I want to be a believer. And uh, I, I think this is where the challenge gets, you know, repentance it doesn't occur in John, the word doesn't, it doesn't, which is a book tells us how to get saved. It doesn't mm -hmm. recur, occur in uh, Romans either, which is nope. spell out the doctrine of it. My, my take on repentance, I do think they're different things. And I base that on the fact that they're two different words. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so right. my understanding yeah. is repentance is a precursor to believing, but the repentance is you're repenting from whatever you've been trusting in to trust in Christ only. Right. And so it's a, it is a change of mind, like Charlie would say. Um, and I completely agree with that, but, but in that movement, I'm moving kind of like we would say, you've got to hear before you can believe faith comes by here, you know? So, mm -hmm. so hearing is a precursor too. you got to hear the gospel before you can believe the gospel. So in this game, there's some sequence going on and there's something that goes on that says, I'm going to give up on, whatever I've been trusting in church attendance or being good or, you know, my good works, you know, back to the topic, right. I'm going to repent of trusting in that to only trust in Christ. It's not about the transformation of my life or some big commitment. It's actually about the focus of my faith. So I'm repenting, I'm changing my mind about what I was counting on to get me into heaven to come to count on Christ only. Right. And I've also heard it defined as a change of mind from unbelief to belief. Well, and all that's now we're on the topic, but I mean, we're, we're on the issue because repentance is a change of mind. So now we got to talk about, about what similar right. faith. faith is believing, bl taking it to be true. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Come to a conclusion. That's what it means. The object of the faith makes all the difference in the world. So we could talk about, you and I could talk about, repentance uh, in our life, you know, repentance from uh, too many hamburgers, but I'm just saying, fried chicken. <laughs> yeah, fried chicken. There you go. Yeah. From, from, uh, you know, have a change of mind about eating that thing, you know? So, so the word repent means what it means. You need a context to discuss it 
with any right. you know, sanity. And metanoia, I believe is the Greek word. It, it depends on, yeah, you're right. What context are you looking at? Repenting from what? Changing yeah. your mind about what depends on the particular verse. Yeah, you're looking at it. So uh, it can't just always mean turn from sin because oh. it doesn't always mean that in a lot of places. Sometimes it can mean, you know, you change your mind from uh, from serving idols to serving God, you know. And Some people will have from righteousness and uh, go back into sin. Yeah. So it's, that's a, of course we could do a whole other show on that. That's a, that's a great topic as well. Um, we are at the 26 minute mark. So we just got a minute or so. I want to mention your information here, uh, Dr. Liburn, in case anybody's interested and wants to get in touch with you and find out more about you. You certainly have a quite a, an impressive uh, uh, list of accomplishments. And um, so that's why I was so glad to have you on today. We'll have you back next week. I believe you're coming back next week. We'll do a, a part two. Uh, on the show here. Here's your information. I'll put it on the screen. Your email is Fred Ray Librand at gmail.com. And your website is independent homeschool.com, uh, where you can find out more uh, about him and his other uh, works that he does as well in relation to homeschool and also your uh, business on, entrepreneur as well. Correct. Yeah, I I, uh, I was telling you earlier, I, I don't have ADHD anymore. There's a new designation called ADOS, which <laughs> is Attention Deficit. Oh, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah, I do some business coaching and, and work in that world and uh, write. And we have like 12 homeschooling courses out there to teach kids how to think for themselves to become their own. A teacher, as it were. And, 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 you know, the crux of uh, this conversation is yes. 300 pages, 600 footnotes. It's a Back to faith. great yes. cure for insomnia, but uh, it really deals in depth with this whole issue of faith and works and understanding that works is a conversation about sanctification, about a walk with God and doesn't belong right. to a conversation about the gospel. Where can folks get the book? A Amazon or anywhere. It's, it's okay. out there. Back to Faith, Librand. Great. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Libran, thank you so much for coming on Point of Defense. God bless you, and it's been an honor to have you on, and I will uh, have you back next week, and I will see you on the next show. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, my YouTube channel, please go to Point of Defense with Reverend John Crawford. Hit subscribe, like, and share. Make a one-time donation if you can, or an ongoing donation. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thanks for watching. Support this ministry through PayPal on our YouTube page. See you on the next show.